I mean, can you, you can see it when you watch the video? Is it okay? Yeah. Theory. Okay. Theory. So we're, we're, yes. What happens if you run out of paper? Um, there's some more paper right there. Um, you know. Okay. Um, so we're we're officially live. I didn't I didn't say three two one, but we are officially live. So um, I'm going to move right ahead. Do you need any more paper? No, I was just asking. I, I have oh, and then if you if you run out, if you have a notebook, I prefer the spiral ring notebook approach for. Yes, I I have that. Yes. I was just asking. You to yeah. Oh okay. yeah. Yeah. I really strongly encourage spiral ring notebooks. Do not. I don't like the single sheet of paper method because what happens is if you drop your binder and they all fly fly out you have usually you don't have numbers on the pages and you don't know where they go they get lost they get thrown away but if you have a spiral ring notebook it's there forever right what if it's that not does a not what if it's and that kind of thing is fine too yeah a, but a notebook that's contained right it has its paper in it way better than yeah way better than just single sheets of paper um, all right, so yesterday we talked about age word problems. We had the introduction to it. I think you guys are starting to get the idea now, right? So now I'm going to throw two more things at you, two more styles of age word problems. They're not, this one in particular is very similar to the other one. Actually, they both are. They're just little tricks you have to know. So, um, so uh, first of all, I'm always going to start with my box. I find the box really helpful for... Um, giving me my information, right? Putting my information in here, organizing it, and then I know what I'm using to create my equation. If I don't have the box, I don't have the stuff, I don't know what I'm using to create my equation, right? Um, you're going to have to do this somehow, either, either in the box or logically, you know what I mean? So I find the box easier for that purpose. So I'm going to put Gary here, and I'm going to put Rowan here. All right, and I'm going to put age now. That's my age now. Okay, it says Gary is 50 and his son Rowan is 18. Well, what would I do that? What would, what would I do? Right, well, I'm going to put 50 here and 18. You know I'm not 50. That's so old. Wait, are you like I'm 60? I don't know who said that. My son. I can't believe he would say that. <laughs> ah! No food for you. Oh my God. No, okay. All right. So, okay. So, it says, so Gary is 50 and his son Rowan is 18. Okay? 50 and 18. So then it says, in how many years? What would I put for here? X, maybe? Is that what you're going to say? Plus X, right? Wouldn't you say, is that in the future or in the past? Future. If it was a past, it would be minus it. But if it's a future, it's plus. And I don't know what it is, so they're asking me to find x now, right? That's interesting. In how many years? So this column is this. But now look, notice, I do not read past in how many years until I have finished filling out my chart, right? I do not read this up. Gary will be twice as old as Rowan, because then I'm going to try to put two times and everything inside here. You don't want to do Wait, that. Wait, what are you trying to find out? What X is? I'm trying to find out X. In how many years will Gary be twice as old as Rowan? I'm wanting to know in how many years. So that's, I'm trying to find this now. Right? So what would I put here? It's just this uh, plus, X. plus X. 50 plus X. Right? And here, 18 plus X. 18 plus X. Okay? Okay. Now this is the key. This is written in a question. In how many years will Gary be twice as old as Rowan? Reword it as a statement. Because an equation is not a question. A mathematical equation is a statement. Does that make sense? Yeah. This plus this equals this. That is a statement. It is not a question. It's not saying, does this plus this equal this? It's not saying that. It's a statement. It's a statement of truth. So I have to turn this question into a statement. How would I re how would I say that? Instead of in how many years, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave out the in how many years. I'm gonna start with here. Gar will Gary be twice as old as Rowan? How would I write say that as a statement? Uh, 50 plus X. Well no, but, but verbally. Like you have uh, 
I would just I would just replace I would just swap these. Gary will be, right? You see what I'm saying? I'm just moving the verb, the, the subject Gary first and the will be or will, yeah, will be the verb second. Does that make sense? That's all I'm doing. I'm just flipping. Instead of will Gary be twice as old as Rowan, I'm saying Gary will be twice as old as Rowan. You see that? Get that? So Gary will be. So Gary, what do I took for Gary? 50 plus x. 50 plus x. Will be. Will be is equals twice as old as Rowan, 18 plus x. That's so easy, right? You see that? It's so easy. As long as you do it exactly in the order that I say it. And then you solve it? And now you just solve it. So I'm going to use my distributive property. I've got 50 plus x is equal to 36 plus 2x. I'm going to, I notice I have x's on both sides of my equation. I don't like that. So I'm going to take my smaller number of x's and I'm going to move them to the other side. Wait, could you take the bigger number of x's? Or I could. I could. I could subtract 2x from both sides. Then I'd have negative x here. Do you see what I mean? And a That's lot of times people fun. mess up because they forget the negatives in front of the 2x and then they divide both sides by 2 instead of negative 2 and then it's, they get the answer wrong. So I think it's just safer to play in the positives as much as you can. Okay, it's a good question. So, all right, so now suddenly these cross out. I have 50 is equal to 36 plus x. You agree with me? Can you subtract 36? Subtract 36. And that gives me x is equal to um, great. Uh, 14. On a video, I should be answering my phone, shouldn't I? Uh, Tell me. Okay, x equals 14. Did I do that right? 14 plus 36, 50, 40, 50. Yes. All right, so I've got x equals 14. So now do I come back here and I say Rowan is 14 and Gary is 50 times 14? Wait, now I go back to my question and see what is the question. In how many years? They want to know how many years. Right? In how many years? Why, what did I just solve for? I solved for years. So all I have to do is, is my answer is say in 14 years. Does that make sense? You always go back to your question. <coughs> read that last sentence so you know what you're solving for, what you're answering for. Okay? Fist to five. Do you guys understand this? All right. So did, did, did everybody understand the plus x here? When it says in how many years, you don't know what it is, right? So it's just plus x. That's your column. Okay? Awesome. All right. The next one, so everybody's pretty good with that one. The next one um, is really simple, but everybody tends to have a short circuit in their brain when I do it. So... Try to really see if you can understand this. Um, where did I put my sheet? Ah. What? That one? That we just did? I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, ten. Not ten. Two. What am I doing? Ten on the sheet. Okay. Number two. The sum. <laughs> this is a, this is slightly tricky. The first sentence of this is slightly tricky. So pay attention. The sum of the ages of um, Isla and Gavin. The sum of the ages of Isla and Gavin is 36. In four years, in four years, comma, um, Gavin Will be will be four times I keep losing my place. Will be four times 
as old as I live. How old is each now? So I'll give you a second to write that down. Just make sure this is still on. Okay. The sum of the ages of Isla and Gavin is 36. In four years, Gavin will be four times as old as Isla. How old is each now? So that first sentence is a little confusing. Isn't it? Does anybody know what, how to set that up? So let's do our box again. Boxes are important. I think. I really think the boxes help a lot. So we've got Isla and Gavin. Okay, we have now. What am I going to have for this column again? Wait, but how do you know that? Times is X. What am plus I going to have? Four. Plus four, right? In four years, plus four. Okay. So now this is the this is the this is the hard part. The sum. The sum of two numbers, right? In other words, two ages is 36. Well, that's interesting. When, do we know what they are? No. No. So we always make one of them what? X. X. We know one of them is X. I think Gavin is X. What is, it doesn't matter which one is X. It makes no difference in this case. The question is, what is the other number? Okay, this is the part that this is, you really pay attention, Tom, pay attention. Really listen. If the first number is x, and x plus something equals 36, then the second number is whatever's left over when you take that x away from 36. So watch this, 36 minus x. So think about it. If the first number is x, the second number has to be whatever is left over when you take 36, the total, and subtract that from it. Don't you agree with me? It's got to be. If, if, if the first eight, if the first number was 10, what would be the second number? It would be 36 minus 10, right? If the first, if the first was one, it'd be 36 minus one for the second one. Don't you agree with me? Mm -hmm. It makes sense. So if you have sum of two numbers, sum of two numbers is. 14. What are my two numbers? X and 14 minus X. The sum of two numbers is 25. My first number is X. My second number is 25 minus X. It's not X minus 25. It's 25 minus X. This is a really, really, really important concept. Uh, you will use this so many times in higher level math. They say the sum of two numbers is something, or the sum of the ages of two people or something, right? In this case, the sum of the ages of Isla and Gavin is 36. Well, one of them is x, and one of them is 36 minus x. If I add these together, right, then it better, darn well better equal 36. Let's just be sure. What is 36 minus x plus x? 36. Negative x plus x cross each other out, it's just 36. It worked, right? Is that weird? Kind of weird. That's bizarre. It's bizarre, but if you always get, if you know that, then that's right. So it doesn't make any difference. It makes not a diddly squat of difference which one we put it in, right? Which which one goes where? So I'm going to say Gavin is, I mean, excuse me, I live as x and Gavin is 36 minus x. Okay? Now it says, th now the rest is straightforward. The rest is just as we've done it before. So I'm going to add 4 to this, so I've got x plus 4. I'm going to add 4 to this, so I've got 40 minus x, right? And so now I'm going to write my equation. <coughs> okay, in four years, that means I'm going to use this information, Gavin, 40 minus x, will be, equals four times as old 
or parenthesis as Isla. Isla is x plus 4. Oh, yeah. Right? Okay, how old is each now? Now it's easy. The only hard part was this. Right? Does everybody understand this part? It's kind of, you could just memorize it. But, I mean, I could even, I could show you in a different format. But let's finish this first. 40 minus x is equal to 4x plus 16. So I don't like my x's on both sides. I'm going to add x here, add x here. So I have 40 equals 5x plus 16. I'm going to subtract my 16, and I get 5x is equal to um, 24, am I right? No, it, wouldn't it be 24 is equal to 5x? Wait, what am I doing? Did I do something wrong? Yeah, I'm right there. What? Wait, what? No, you write 24 equals 5x, right? So, see. So 6, okay, this is 3, 2, 24. Oops, oops, this was supposed to work out, it didn't work out. It's not going to be, it's not going to be, well, I, don't, I can't believe that I, well, yeah, this is a huge list, I probably screwed up. Okay, so I divide by 5, and hopefully I get, how could I change this? All right, hang on a second. Well, let's, like that. No, like, no, 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 no. All right, let's just do one thing. Um, less, all right, as Isla, less, less one. All right, we're going to just change this a little bit. So less one, minus one. So that gives me, now that's 15, right? So I'm, so it's 15. I'm going to subtract 15, subtract 15, and that gives me 25. Look at that. Yes. Right, oh lovely. This is a great video. This is going to be so popular on YouTube. Oh my God. So, right, so x is equal to 5. So all I did is I just, I just modified my equation so it worked, worked, right? Modified my problem. Okay, so x is 5. So back here, I say Isla. Isla is 5. And Gavin is 36 minus 5. 31. Having your old man, buddy. All right. So, do you guys understand it? Yeah. The concept. Okay. This. So, Leo, the sum of two numbers is twenty-one. What are they? Well, one of them is x. Sum of two numbers is twenty-one. Twenty-one minus x. Twenty-one. So if, there's, if two numbers add to equal 21, the first one's x and the second one is 21 minus x, okay? Raven, sum of two numbers is uh, 15. What are the two numbers? Yeah. So you just write that as well. The, the sum of two numbers, sum of two numbers is 15. Wait, I gotta make sure you guys understand this. Okay, here we go. The sum of two numbers is 15. So my first number, I don't know what they are. My first number is what? Raven. X. My second number is what? Raven. No. Yes, 15 minus X. There you go. Yes. All right. Olive. The sum, sum of two numbers is 102. What are the two numbers? 102 minus X. Got it. Right? It's the total minus the X, right? Erica. I saw that smile. The sum of two numbers is 500. Okay, 500 minus X. Well, it's X. Right, okay. All right? That's how you have to set them up, okay? As long as you know that, you'll, be ha you'll have no trouble. Okay? Make sense? Don't you love this stuff? All right.